Quantum computers have the potential to impact so many aspects of our lives, including our security needs, our healthcare, and even the internet. So companies all around the world are working to build these devices. Our country first tried to start semiconductor industry about 60 years ago. This is because semiconductor is a foundational industry. Ideal quantum computer can break encryption standards we use today by finding prime factors of a large integer in just minutes instead of the thousands of years it would take of a classical computer to do. This is NASCOM Quantizations, hosted by Govindraj Ethiraj. In today's episode, we'll delve into India's expanding role in the global tech order, featuring insights from Rohit Kapoor, CEO of global analytics and digital solutions company EXL. From becoming a global research powerhouse to ranking in the top five for technological innovation, India's influence in shaping the future of technology is undeniable. Now let's look at artificial intelligence, where solutions are now and increasingly being adopted by enterprises large and small. And this is also a good time to ask, how and where is artificial intelligence really making a difference? And second, how is accelerated computing, AI integration, and India's digital infrastructure transforming not just the country, but the global tech ecosystem? What does this mean for the future of technology and how is India helping to shape it? India has had a pivotal role in terms of enabling change in the world tech order. But uh, Govind, from my perspective, there are two seismic changes that are taking place and these are likely to play out over the next five to 10 years. Number one is accelerated computing is going to become all pervasive. And that has very, very significant implications. And it certainly has a huge implication for India. The second part is every single company, every single enterprise, public, commercial, private, you know, global, national, local, is going to be adopting AI into the workflow. So we're going to have AI being embedded into every single workflow and everything that touches people and, and touches product. So that's another big shift that's taking place. And again, I think India is you know, really positioned in a very advantageous position as far as I'm concerned. India has got very, very strong talent base, which is very well versed in terms of helping organizations make these changes. And I think that's something which is going to stand in good stead going forward. With the recent advancements in cloud infrastructure, for example, Oracle and NVIDIA collaborating to provide Zeta-scale AI computing platforms, how does EXL or Rohit Kapoor see accelerated computing shaping business models in India? Specifically, how does one define accelerated computing in the context of India's established strengths in outsourcing and IT investments? And then, how are customers demanding, or rather, what are they demanding in terms of AI-driven business outcomes? So obviously there's been an explosion of, you know, the large language models. The large language models necessarily need to use accelerated computing in order to be effective because today you need the ability to compute in a distributed environment and that needs to be done real time. The real power of this is that everything can be processed real time and in order to process real time, you need accelerated computing. Today, accelerating computing is available on the cloud and it's available in a single instant on the cloud. But just think about it. If every single laptop, every mobile device, every device that's going to be connected is going to have the power of accelerated computing, then what you can do in this particular ecosystem is going to be enormous. So I think that change that's going to take place is, is going to be tremendous. The real issue in terms of the use of accelerated computing is that there's a huge amount of wastage that takes place if it's not orchestrated and engineered correctly. So there's going to be a huge requirement to be able to make sure that you can optimize how this power of accelerated computing is being used and therefore, 
the ability to design, orchestrate, engineer, and structure this correctly, that's going to be a critical attribute. Now, India has 60% of the global technology workforce. It is in an incredible position to be able to allow for this design, engineering, and orchestration. And I think that's what India's relevance will be in the next five and 10 years. And that's exciting because India can play a pivotal role in this change. So how, for example, would this acceleration happen in the banking or insurance sectors, both being areas we encounter almost every other day? Now, the Indian banking sector has been pushing AI-powered solutions for better fraud detection and customer service. The sector is also increasingly using generative AI to improve fraud detection, streamline compliance tasks, and enhance customer service through natural language processing tools. The Reserve Bank of India has been pushing for greater adoption of AI and machine learning in banking to improve operational efficiency, fraud detection, and personalized consumer experiences. So if you take banking or you take insurance or you take healthcare, so far what we've been able to do is basically apply computing and apply AI to largely to structured data sets. And we all know that structured data sets are only 10% of the total magnitude and volume of data. 90% of the data is unstructured. So in order to be able to create a greater amount of personalization, a greater amount of pointed solutions that are going to be frictionless, you need to be able to use unstructured data and therefore you need accelerated computing and therefore you need AI to be embedded into the workflow. Now, take a bank for example. If there is a loan that's been made and that's been made you know, five years ago, the relevance of that loan today may be very different because the needs of that particular individual consumer would have changed. In the past, we never had the ability to be able to take a look at a 360-degree view of that consumer. We only saw what they you know, took as a product line and then just followed it linearly to be able to provide the best experience. But if you can actually have a 360-degree view of the customer, then you can actually point to much richer solutions, much more appropriate and targeted for that individual and make it much more relevant. So in this scenario, we're referring to two key components. The first is the data itself, whether it's being pulled from existing sources or gathered afresh by the bank or an insurance company. The second aspect is the computing power required to process, synthesize, and generate actionable insights from that data, which then can be used by a company or enterprise to provide relevant options or solutions to customers for future engagement. From our perspective, there are three things that are really critical. Number one is the domain and the knowledge of the industry. Number two is the ability to manage, store, and use data. And that data part becomes really critical. And number three is how do you apply AI so that you can fine-tune the AI models and get the right kind of outcome associated with that. So the domain plus data plus AI is a critical trifecta that you need to kind of bring together. And obviously, you need to deploy this in a manner where the computing capacity that you're using is optimized. And you need to do this with speed, and you need to do it at low cost. Because remember, innovation fails if the speed and cost is too high. You can have the best idea, but you cannot scale it up unless and until speed and costs are also there. The beauty of innovation is that you've got to try multiple avenues and multiple pathways, and 90, 95, 99% of them will fail. And therefore, you've got to be comfortable being able to kind of uh, experiment with a host of different options and then zero in on that one option or the few options which really work, and then scale it up. And those scaling up capabilities require talent. They require an ability to implement and execute. They require a knowledge and understanding of the business data and AI. During a recent visit to India, Jack Wright, Chief Technology and Platform Officer at McKinsey & Company, said that Gen AI would play a critical role in making technology available to India's vast population. She said that 
Work done on AI in India could serve as a proof of concept for the world. Now, India is home to 60% of the world's tech workforce, a significant figure that underscores the country's pivotal role in advancing technologies like accelerated computing and, of course, AI. Now, this tech force is crucial in shaping and implementing these innovations across various sectors, including banking. So how do these technological needs and requirements of Indian banks, for instance, compare to their counterparts overseas? Specifically, are there notable convergences in their demands for AI and accelerated computing solutions? So, you know, when you think about lending principles and the way in which credit is determined, who to give credit to, how much to give credit to, how to price credit, I think some of those attributes tend to cut across industries and geographies. But what needs to be done is you need to apply that in the relevant context. And each country has its own set of regulations. Each country has its own set of cultural preferences and things which consumers prefer or don't prefer. So being able to customize this into that relevant context for regulation, for culture, for individual preferences, I think the beauty again is that AI now allows you to do that. And you can have one single platform, but you can apply that in multiple different models and multiple different ways across the globe. And that's a huge advantage. Now, while India's tech talent pool stands as a significant force, it's crucial to understand how this talent is organized and distributed to meet the complex demands of modern businesses. Consider the scenario of clients based in Europe or North America, who are often seeking a unified view of their consumers, wanting to quickly collect disparate data sets, synthesize them effectively, and subsequently develop fresh strategies to retain or attract new customers. According to Deloitte, the consulting firm, 42% of Indian IT professionals are now focused on data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. And McKinsey Global Institute reported companies in North America and Europe increasingly relying on Indian tech talent to support digital transformation initiatives. India has the size and scale of talent which is unparalleled. It's got an ecosystem of being able to train, develop, and continue to be able to upskill into newer technologies. Think about it this way, Govin. When a new startup is today created in the US, the very first thing that they do is to make sure that their engineering talent is based in India, because it provides them the ability to rapidly scale that up and do it at low cost. So the ability to create a startup which is going to have a significant impact today is so much enhanced and the cost of doing that is become so much lower that you can actually drive a huge amount of change. Uh, when large organizations, uh, which are the technology uh, you know, organizations, and they're trying to build out uh, newer models and newer LLM models, they need a huge amount of trained workforce that can enable the ability to kind of go up on the complexity spectrum and the customization that is needed. Again, uh, India is the one destination that can provide that kind of a task. There's going to be a big pivot and a big change that is going to be necessary because the amount of talent and the manpower that you need today for software development is likely to come down in a very, very significant and meaningful way. But the amount of talent that is going to be required for embedding AI into the workflow or for enabling accelerated computing to work, that's going to shoot up in a very, very significant and material way. And the big question is, Can the talent in India make this pivot or is that going to be a hurdle and an obstacle for India? And I believe it's going to be something that talent base in India can make this pivot very easily and very quickly and very credibly. Talent in India has demonstrated this time and time again. And they've done this, uh, you know, when we moved from Y2K, when we moved to the cloud, when we moved to mobility, when we moved to robotics when we are now moving to AI and data. A survey by the World Economic Forum highlights that while India boasts a substantial tech workforce, there are notable gaps in advanced skills, particularly in areas such as deep learning and quantum computing. Approximately 50% or half of Indian companies report challenges in finding talent with expertise in these emerging technologies. Moreover, 
Creativity and intellectual property development are becoming increasingly crucial in the tech landscape. As development projects often involve creating or advancing intellectual property or IP, the question arises, how is India positioned to address these challenges? And what does the future hold for India's role in advancing these critical areas of technology? So creativity requires a mindset which basically challenges the status quo and thinks about new and different ways of doing things. The best part about India is just by virtue of its size and scale of its talent, if everybody was to think about doing something different, the creativity quotient of India is going to be phenomenal. The second is there is a need for having high ambition. And I think what you find in the talent base in India is that there's a high level of ambition and motivation to make an impact and to make that change. And the third thing for creativity is you necessarily need to be able to learn from others and learn from your own mistakes. And because we have this great ecosystem in India, the ability to be able to see what's happening, what works, what doesn't work, I think that allows for that creativity to come out in in a very, very meaningful way. If you take domain-specific LLMs, those are being created If you take a look at small language models, those are being created. Now, each one of these is a creative, you know, aspect that's being kind of uh, made into reality. And so you're seeing the burgeoning of this, you know, kind of take place in a pretty accelerated manner in India. And then technological innovation. What are the kinds of innovations that Rohit is looking at or currently monitoring or anticipating in the near future? Are these innovations emerging through specific types of partnerships, novel approaches to intellectual property or IP development, or unique team structures? How are these elements contributing to the progress and realization of these technological advancements? Yeah, I think you know you spoke about IP and you know technological kind of uh, change that is taking place. I think the ability to use accelerated computing and you know use it in an optimal way again i think india stands out in that and that's where i see a large number of these technological innovations taking place there are a number of accelerators that are going to get created there are a number of modules or components that would get created and these would end up being a plug and play And then finally, the ability to orchestrate a number of these accelerators together and what's the right combination of that, that becomes critical. One fundamental question that gets asked these days is, is it going to be the foundational LLMs that are going to rule the world? Or is it going to be the vertical LLMs that are going to rule the world? Or is it going to be that all the companies which have the systems of record who are embedding AI into their systems, is that going to rule the world? Frankly, it seems to be a combination of all of these put together. And what we are finding is figuring out which LLM to apply when in what particular use case and what combination of LLMs to be used and how to use them. That's becoming a far greater differentiator than just using one single LLM as such. So I would see India's startup ecosystem continuing to drive some of this innovation and some of this change. And today, India is unafraid of investing in technological innovation. It is unafraid of spending capital to get a much greater return over a longer period of time than trying to make money on that particular promise immediately. And I think that confidence and that change in mindset, that's enormous as well. Recently, geopolitical tensions have been heightened by developments such as the ongoing U.S.-China trade disputes and the evolving dynamics in the Indo-Pacific region. For instance, the strategic competition between the U.S. and China has led to increased scrutiny of global supply chains and technology transfer policies impacting businesses and technology sectors worldwide. In this situation, how does India or how could India evolve in the next few years? How will these challenges or opportunities affect India's position and strategy? in the global market. Let me talk about the geopolitical challenges first. One of the things which has become pretty obvious is 
if you move the data to the cloud and you access that data from anywhere in the world, that's getting more and more prominence. So the ability to work on that data, to be able to make that change from India or any location for that matter, I think that's becoming a lot easier, a lot better, and that's enabling this change to kind of drive forward a lot faster. Now, there will be regulation that is needed, and we certainly have seen regulation kick in on that, you know, in the US, in Europe, and in India. And the only requirement on that is, as long as there is broad alignment on that regulation, I think it will work really well. And we do need regulation to define what the rules and what the guidelines are. So I think that geographical, geopolitical framework seems to be playing out quite nicely for India. There is one aspect, which is the fear of some jobs and some work that was being done in the past being eliminated. And, you know, I think India has to get over that and not be protective of trying to kind of, you know, protect the legacy part of the business. Because if you do that, you really cannot make the pivot and the change to the newer technologies and take that leap forward. So that's something to be very careful of and kind of move away. In fact, I would argue that the faster you can create efficiency, automation, and transformation in the legacy parts of the work, the faster you can move forward on the innovation you know, spectrum. So that's number one. Number two is there are a number of new technologies new software writing codes, new ways of doing things that are being created. And the ability to learn and the ability to deploy that and to be able to change and make that pivot, that becomes uh, very, very crucial. So the learning and the development and the experimentation, I think that becomes very important. And the third thing is, how do you elevate yourself as a country in terms of not doing you know, the lower end work only, but actually being able to play in the higher levels of change and the complexity spectrum. And I think that ability to kind of graduate is something which, you know, India needs to learn. And as we close today's episode of NASCOM Conversations, India's role in the global tech landscape stands out with fresh developments. The recent launch of India's first semiconductor manufacturing plant signals a leap in localizing tech or chip production. Meanwhile, new initiatives like the National Mission on Quantum Technology aim to bridge the skills gap in advanced areas like deep learning. Geopolitically, India's strategic partnerships and focus on digital sovereignty reflect its proactive approach to global uncertainties. As India integrates artificial intelligence and accelerates computing, it is not only scaling its existing strengths, but also driving innovation through creative new approaches. Thank you for joining us. Stay tuned for more insights on how India is shaping the future of technology. You've been listening to NASCOM Conversations hosted by Govindraj Etiraj. This is a joint production between NASCOM and The Core. Do subscribe to us on your favorite podcast app, we're available on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, and all the major podcast apps. If you have any feedback, you can write to us at feedback at the core.in. Thank you for listening.